Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to episode 3 of Fightcraft. In this episode, we are going to create the game class. If you remember from the last episode, we created the map class, which represents a map where players can play a game of Fightcraft. It contains all of the pertinent information, the world where it takes place, all of the spawn locations, and then all of the chests within the world that can be filled with items. Today we're going to write the game class, which is going to represent one game of Fightcraft. Now, none of this data is going to be stored in a configuration file because this is a short-lived uh, type of class. Whereas the map defines all of the information about a map, the game class just represents one game, and as soon as the game is over, then it's finished. We don't need the instance anymore, it will be removed and garbage collected. So the game class will contain as one of its instance variables the current map that is being used. Uh, as well as other information like all of the players in the game. And uh, it will be in charge of, you know, manipulating the players within the game uh, and all of that other stuff that comes with running the game. You know, starting and stopping the game, maintaining the state of the game, and all of those um, different things. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's go ahead and create a new class called Game. And within game, we are going to create uh, an enumerator that stores the state of the game. So public enum game state. If you don't know what an enumerator or enum is, I do have a video on it, so I'd recommend checking it out. Um, but we're going to define an enumerator that represents the state of the current game. So there are a bunch of different possible states. Uh, but you have to remember that the way that this game works is the players are teleported into a lobby, and once they're within the lobby, they can vote on a game, and once enough people join, then the game will be created. So the game is not created until uh, everyone is present. So there's not going to be a waiting game state, because that will just be in the lobby. Uh, so instead of a waiting game state, we're going to start off with the countdown game state. So the first thing that happens is there is a countdown timer. As soon as all of the players join and the game is created, um, there's a countdown, maybe, you know, five or ten seconds, um, and then the game will begin. So there's the countdown state. Um, I guess we'll, we'll call that active, maybe we'll change it, but active just means that the game is, uh, you know, happening right now. Um, so then as soon as that is finished, I mean, I guess that that's really it when you're dealing with a game sort of like this. The game is either going to be counting down uh, or the game is going to be active. Because as soon as someone wins, this instance of game will be deleted because we don't need it anymore. And then a new instance would be created later. So this is a little bit different than some of the other games that we've done in the past. But this is all that we really need. And this game state is going to be very important because if the game is counting down, we don't want players to be able to fight each other, things like that. Um, so we're going to be able to check the game state to see, um, you know, whether a certain event should be able to happen. For example, when it's counting down, uh, the player should not be able to walk around. We want them to stay in their spot until the countdown is over. So that is actually going to be very important. I suppose you could use a Boolean, but we're going to keep game state for now in case we happen to add something later. Um, so let's do the instance variables. So there is, of course, the game state. Um, but I guess before that, we'll go ahead and put the map. So uh, each game will contain a map, which map is you know being used for that particular game. Uh, and then from there, of course, we can get information about where to spawn the players, which world it is, and filling the chests and all of that stuff. So uh, you know which map is being used, what is the current state of the game, and the other thing is an array list of players. We want to know all of the players in here for a variety of reasons. We need to be able to interact with the players in the game, for example, sending them messages or, you know, checking to see if they are in a game or which game they're in when we write a game manager class. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of different things. Now, again, I know it's bad practice, or it's considered bad practice to use an array list with players, but remember that as soon as the game ends, this game instance will be removed, and then this array list too will be removed, because it's not going to be referenced anymore. So we don't need to worry. When you're dealing with short-lived 
objects like a game, you don't need to worry so much as long as you're careful with those objects uh, you know, when you're writing all of your code. We'll go ahead and write the constructor for the game, and the game is going to take a map, because by default the state is going to be countdown, and the players are going to be empty, uh, but we need to know which map there is. Although I suppose actually, um, I guess it would take an array list of players to begin with, because all of the players will be in a lobby, and we'll be keeping track of all of those players, and then we will pass all of the players that were in the lobby over to here. So the game again is instantiated once there are enough players and once a map is voted on. So we want to assign the map to be equal to, give it a second, we need to assign the map to be equal to whatever map is passed, uh, whichever map all the players voted on. The state is going to of course be countdown because the game will begin in the countdown state. And then players is going to be uh, well, just players, just like that. And we might, no, I think that should be okay. So those are the instance variables, at least right now, that we have. Um, and now we need to write a bunch of different instance uh, methods. Now, we're not going to write all of them today, uh, because there are going to be a bunch of them in here, but we're going to write a couple. So the first one we're going to write, these are all going to deal with the player. Or Well, first let's just write a getter for the game state. So get state, return state. So we don't want a setter because that's we're going to set it within the game class. Uh, but we do want, <coughs> excuse me, we do want to be able to get it. Because with all of those listeners that we're going to have, we need to know the state of the game. Then we're going to do a bunch of things with the player. So we're going to have a public boolean um, contains player, and it's going to just return players.contains p. Um, we don't want to make the array list of players public. We don't want a public array list player get players because we don't want uh, anything to be tampering with that. We want to make sure that it contains the correct list of players in the game, or else there could be serious issues. But we do need to know if the game contains a specific player, because there are certain times, especially in those listeners, when we want to check to see if the player uh, is in a game, and even which game the player is in. So that's going to be very important right there. Um, we'll also write a public void message, or we'll call it broadcast, and it's going to take a message and it's just going to iterate over all of the players. So for player p in players, p dot send message, message, whatever the message happens to be, theoretically with color. And what you could do is you could add a uh, prefix. So if you want, uh, you know, fight craft in brackets, then you could add it right there as a prefix. This broadcast is just. Um, you know, it's an easy way to send messages, and we're going to be using it a lot for the countdown, for any, you know, information. I guess when someone dies, we would broadcast information, um, you know, all of that information right there. So that's all we're going to do for this video. Uh, I don't want to make this video too long, uh, but in the next video, we are going to work on the countdown. Uh, so when the game starts, and I guess that would be within the constructor, actually, we're going to create a uh, countdown that will, you know, give, you know, 10 second warning or however long the warning will be, and then it will modify the game state. Once we have uh, the game class finished or in a good position, we'll uh, write managers for game and map so we can keep track of them. And then from there, there's command stuff and listener stuff and, well, there's a lot of stuff that's left to do, but we are making good progress. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you think, maybe what features you want to see, you know, anything you want to comment about. And if you like this video, click the like button. I'll see you guys soon with some more coding. Bye for now.